Good afternoon, everybody. This is Pastor Mike from First Baptist Church of Richlands. I'm glad you tuned in to, to join us on this message. And something I felt led to do uh, as we have this quarantine or shelter in place order, whatever you want to call it, um, I wanted to take an opportunity where I was being intentional about uh, having a time where I could share the Word of God with you on a regular basis. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, is throughout, as long as this lasts, um, each day of the week, Monday through Friday, uh, I'm going to be sharing a devotion from uh, one chapter of Paul's prison epistles. I'm going to start in Ephesians chapter 1 today and share a little bit of a, a devotion about that. Not the whole chapter, but a, a select portion of that. And encourage you to read the rest of it on your own. And if you follow these videos uh, day by day with your family, you'll have um, completed your way through Ephesians, then Philippians. And, and we'll just continue working our way through God's Word and, and growing as disciples. So I want to start by sharing... Uh, Ephesians chapter 1, and I'm just going to read the first 14 verses here uh, with you and share some devotional thoughts about that. But Ephesians chapter 1, starting in verse 1, says this, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and are faithful in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ, with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before Him. In love, He predestined us for adoption to Himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of His will, to the praise of His glorious grace, with which He has blessed us in the Beloved. In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of His grace." which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance, until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. You know, when I read this passage, the, the first thing that, that pops off the pages, in my mind anyway, is this phrase we see repeated over and over again, in him or through him, in Christ, through Christ. In fact, 11 times in these first 14 verses, we see the phrase, through Jesus or in Jesus. In verse 3, we learn that God has blessed us in Christ. In verse 4, we see that God chose us in Him. Verse 5, again, tells us we're predestined for adoption through Jesus Christ. In verse 7, in Christ we have redemption. Verse 9 tells us that God makes His will known to us in Christ. Verse 10 tells us God plans to unite all things together in Christ. And verse 11 tells us in Him we've obtained our inheritance. Verse 12 reminds us that those who hope in Him glorify God. In verse 13, it's in Christ that we've heard the gospel and believed. Verse 13 again, it says, In Him or in Christ you have been sealed with the Holy Spirit. Now that begs a question when we read that. How do we find ourselves in Him? You know, God's... out obviously going out of his way to, to make this point, that it's, it's very important for us to find ourselves in communion or in Christ. So we've got to ask ourselves, how can we do that? And I want to talk about just a couple of real quick ways we can find ourselves in Christ. The first is we can find ourselves in his presence. And we do that in a couple ways. And the first and simple and most obvious way to do that, to find ourselves in Christ, is to pray is to be intentional about our prayer lives. And I'm not talking about just saying grace before a meal or our evening prayers before we go to bed. I'm talking about a fervent prayer life where we actually engage in a dialogue with God, where we share our burdens, we, we offer our praises, we give Him thanksgiving, but we can connect with Him and find ourselves in Him by simply talking to Him. And that's something we can do whether we're in quarantine or not. So I want to encourage all of you to do that, to, to be more intentional and fervent about your prayer life. We can also find ourselves in His presence through, through Bible reading and Bible study. You know, my hope and my prayer is that if nothing else comes of, of all of this uh, pandemic, as we find ourselves spending more and more time at home, that we'll be spending more and more time 
in the Word of God, studying, growing, uh, and learning what God has in store for us. And we find ourselves in His presence by praying and by spending time in His Word. Another way we can find ourselves in Him is we can find ourselves in God's plan. And we can do that through, through missions. Now, uh, admittedly, right now, missions presents us with a little bit of a challenge. You know, we're not supposed to be in close contact with people to help to uh, prevent the spread of this virus, but we can be creative. You know, there are things that we can do missionally. We can, we can run errands and, and do some things for those of us who are higher risk for infection than we are. We can, we can run to the grocery store. We can get prescriptions. We can do simple things and have a missional or a missionary type mindset and finding ourselves right square in the middle of, of God's plan for us. We can do things outside. You know, talk to your neighbor who's elderly or, or, or somebody who's, who, who, who is sick and volunteer or offer yourselves in service in an outdoor project of some sort, whether it's cutting grass or weeding a garden or planting a garden, whatever it may be, we can engage in outside mission activities and present, and present no threat to anybody with this coronavirus. You know, we can also find ourselves in his plan by making sure we're staying connected with our church family and staying connected with our brothers and sisters in Christ, distance does not have to mean disconnection. We can certainly be uh, spread apart physically, but connect through social media and phone calls and letters and other ways. So I want to encourage you to find yourself in God's plan by making sure that you're being intentional about staying connected with other people. And lastly, uh, we can find ourselves in Him, in His purpose. And our ultimate purpose is to share Him and to share the gospel with a world that desperately needs to hear it. And no quarantine needs to prevent us from doing that. We live in an era of unprecedented technology and ways to communicate. If you don't know and you can't articulate your personal testimony of salvation, then now's a great time to go ahead and, and put pen to paper. Write down your thoughts, who you were before Christ, who, how you came to know Christ, and how your life's been different since. That's your testimony. And you can share that story in, in a plethora of different platforms. So I want to encourage you to do that. God's plan for us is to make disciples of all nations. In quarantine or no quarantine, we can certainly do that. Folks, I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. I want to say a, a quick prayer over us and encourage you to go ahead and read the rest of Ephesians chapter 1. And I'll record another video tomorrow where we're going to share a devotion from Ephesians 2. So let's pray together. Father in heaven, thank you for the gift of this day. I thank you, Lord, that, uh, for your reminder in your word today that we are to find ourselves in you. Uh, and Lord, I pray that um, through, in, in spite of our circumstances, uh, that, that we would take time to be intentional about our spiritual growth, that we'd be intentional about growing in our relationship with you, that we'd find ourselves in your presence, in your plan, and, and discover your purpose for us. Uh, Lord, I thank you and rejoice in what you're doing. I rejoice in who you are. And I pray your richest blessings upon each who hears this message. God, we love you. We thank you. And it's in Jesus' name we offer this prayer today. Amen.